verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. Now that's important to understand. So then the Jews, what they don't understand right here is that the blessing that God gave to Abraham is supposed to fall upon the Gentiles as well. Now remember, when Paul is arguing Abraham right here, he is basing it on this condition, which is what a lot of the Jews are breaking and not focusing. Faith, right? We proved this in the previous verses. I'm not going to prove it again. But I prove to you that Abraham was saved by faith, not by works, concerning imputed for righteousness for salvation. I'm not going to get into all the other justification by works where he had to do all that. I'm not going to get into that. That was covered at a different video, which was very important that I hope you would use. It was important against anti-dispensationalism and against Jews. So this was powerful against both sides. But anyway, aside from that fact, the point is we know from the previous verses Abraham was saved uh, by faith. This was a condition. That's how you join in the promises. So he received a promise. But it was based and conditioned by faith, not Jewish practices, not by the law. That's why the Gentiles, so we got Christians here, and majority of them are Gentiles. Gentiles can share in this promise. Why? Because what's the condition? Is the condition being born from Abraham or is the condition faith? See, that's the point. That's the point that the Jews keep missing. So the Gentiles, we get to join the promises of Abraham because we follow the condition. Now, here's the thing. If the Jews keep arguing against you, no, you cannot share in the promise of Abraham. It's us, it's us, it's us. You tell them this. You tell them, one, they broke the condition. Hmm. Faith. Number two, they, do, they even broke the condition of the law. <laughs> yeah. They're not doing animal sacrifices. So you tell them this. Maybe I'm not literally born from Abraham, but I'm a lot closer to you on that promise than you. <laughs> so you point that out to a Jew. So that's why Gentiles can join in that, because we follow this condition. That's why we join in the Abraham concerning this promise. Now, however, there's another side to this which is very dangerous. These are anti-Semites and these are anti-dispensationalists. And these can include, this can include some of the people who are into Jewish practices who try to get on the Old Testament Jews, the Judaism of today. And they'll say those are not real Jews. Those are fake Jews. They're somewhere from the Khazars or there's something where there's a split tribe and then they're not the real Jews. And if you look at DNA, everyone is a Jew and blah, 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 blah. And if you hear a voice that's like, eh, 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 when he talks and say, I'm the man of God here, you better shut that person off. They, those guys don't know what they're talking about. So these numbskulls and knuckleheads, they're going to say, I'm a Jew, and then he don't look like a Jew from Adam. I mean, just looking at the guy. So the thing is this, is that these people will claim, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew, I'm a Jew. You know, here's the funny thing, you know, everyone wants to be a Jew. I mean, why can't you say I'm a Christian, huh? Oh my goodness, like, it's like it shows you, me your priority. It's more on Jews than being a Christian. But anyway, aside from that fact, these anti-dispensationalists, they're, they're going to use this verse to prove that Abraham's promise does not apply to physical Jews today. They're going to insist that the Jews today, so let me try to put a little bit different colors here so that we can make some sense. So remember, these are the Jews, right? Paul was arguing against them. Now, we fall into this promise, correct? Yeah, I argued that. But then that means these Jews, it does not apply, this certain promise. So that's the problem right there. That's what they're going to argue. Yeah. Now, the argument against that is this. The, the easy debunking to this argument. Oh, one more thing. That's why they're going to argue this promise is conditional. So in order to be a Jew, you have to follow the condition. But no. We dispensationalists, Bible believers, believe in this. The Abrahamic covenant is an unconditional promise that the Jews get anyway. Yeah. Now, the problem is this, though. Pastor, you're just contradicting yourself. You said right here, this is faith, and you follow that condition. Here's the thing. Okay, look at this verse. You're not reading your Bible. Exactly. That the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, what? Through Jesus Christ. 
So this is based through Jesus Christ you get this promise. That we might receive the promise. How do we receive the promise? Promise of the what? So this promise is what? Of the Spirit. Okay. This promise is not physical. It's spiritual. See that? It says promise of the Spirit, belonging to the Spirit. See that? It says through Jesus Christ. That's a salvation that's based on a spiritual condition. So here's something that these anti-dispensationalists don't understand. When God gave the promise to Abraham, he didn't... Let's use our heads here. Did he give... Uh, did he give only a spiritual promise to Abraham or did he literally and physically meant it, this land belongs to you? These physical people born from you are going to inherit this land. Yeah. Well, I think it's physical. They did a lot of physical shedding of blood with the sword, conquering nations to get that land. So it's, really, it's physical and literal. So obviously there's a physical, literal side to this promise. But what Paul is arguing is on the side of the spiritual here. You see that? The spiritual promise of Abraham. That's what the physical, literal Jews miss out on. The physical, literal Jews, what they miss out on is the spiritual promise of Abraham by faith. That's what you got to understand. But the physical Jew, the literal nation of Israel, they still have what? The physical, literal promise of Abraham that this land belongs to them. Yeah. I know there are Jewish elites involved and there are Catholics and Masons and other hands involved with the nation of Israel, but here's something you got to get through your head. It doesn't matter what Satan's men do. If this is what God says that land belongs to them, that belongs to them. Just because some of the devil's men get involved in that, that does not invalidate God. Satan cannot invalidate God's promise, and I don't care how many Rothschilds or Masons are involved, they cannot invalidate God's promise. That's what you got to understand right there. So these, yeah, there may be evil hands behind the scene where the Jews get their promised land, but you got to remember this. God can, use, God can use any evil king for the Jews to get their land back. Is anything too hard for God? He used the evil king Nebuchadnezzar to take away the land of the Jews, and he used Cyrus, who's a type of the Antichrist. He used his hand to restore the nation of Israel. What in the world, man? Just because you see a Rothschild and then some elites involved who don't probably number more than a thousand in Israel or something like that, then you're going to freak out and say, all the nation does not belong to them? For crying out loud, for the, small little, uh, for the small little percentage of elites, there is a small number out there who rule pretty much the whole world in their hands. And you're going to freak out just because of a small number, huh? Yeah. Oh my goodness, get rid of millions of people based on a small number. Maybe that's why Satan wants that small number to get involved so that people can just reject God's promise for those millions of Jews. Good. Now, here's the thing. So we see right here, this is so easy to argue. It's based on a spiritual promise. I don't care if you're a physical, literal Jew. If you reject this spiritual condition of receiving Christ by faith, you're going to burn in hell for all eternity and know you are not a child of Abraham spiritually. Yeah, you may boast to be Abraham's seed physically, but spiritually you're a child of the devil. That's right. You may be born from Abraham's bloodline, but spiritually you're from Satan. That's important to understand. I don't care who you're born from. Who cares who you're born from? Amen. Spiritually, you're a child of the devil, and I don't care who you are. you got to understand that fact. Well, I'm a Jew, and it makes me an exception. No, John Haggy. No, it does not make you an exception. John Hagee thinks that every Jew is automatically saved because he confuses this physical, pro physical, unconditional promise to Israel with a spiritual conditional promise. You see why dispensationalism is so important? It debunks both sides of wicked, extreme doctrines. All right, let's keep reading right here. Verse 15. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. So now Paul, he's speaking normally to them. Though it be but a man's covenant, so it is a covenant with man, yet if it be confirmed, if God confirms it, no man disannulleth or added thereto. This is very important to understand. The covenant God made with Abraham, it cannot be broken. Uh, 
this is my question right here. Why do anti-dispensationalists think that when God gave the covenant to Abraham, that God broke the promise to Abraham and replaced it with New Testament doctrine, huh? That's something confusing. No, the covenant cannot be disannulled. And, right, and this should be an encouragement to Christians too because what's the context right here as well? It's spiritual, right? Spiritual. That cannot be disannulled, faith. So see, it doesn't matter how many times you doubt your salvation, that covenant God made cannot be broken. You made a covenant with God, and not only that, God confirmed it. Amen. No man can disannul it. Amen. So that should be an encouragement to you. Sure, you might think, well, it's just a covenant God made with man. But no, God confirmed it, and you cannot disannul it, and you cannot even add it. When someone tries to add faith and then gives out pretty words, oh, you know, it's a real faith that consists of works, cross them out. Cross them out. You cannot add there to. Is that what the verse said? Yeah. Don't you dare add to this. Don't add to this. Don't add to this. It is only by faith that we receive the gift of salvation and no man can disannul it no matter what. And this is not just, a, just only a spiritual covenant with Abraham. This includes the physical covenant God made with Abraham too. Uh, just in case, I'm just going to jump, go back to Judges and we'll finish, okay? Go to Judges chapter 2. So this is not just a spiritual covenant with Abraham that God cannot break. What also cannot be broken is God's physical covenant. Because let me ask you this question. Okay, if you think that the Abrahamic covenant, God cannot break it spiritually, so you're saying then, oh, but Abraham, with your physical covenant, I'll break it? You think that's the case? No. The Bible means what it says. It says covenant. Covenant is covenant. So that means physical and spiritual sides to it. The whole covenant cannot be broken with Abraham. Let's look at Judges chapter 2, and then we'll close it right here for the day. Verse 1, And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bochim, and he said, I made you to go up out of Egypt. Did you ever get up out of Egypt, or were these physical Jews? These were physical Jews, right? That's not you. That's not you. Who are you talking about? So these are Jews, literal physical Jews. Oh, by the way, these uh, literal physical Jews, a lot of them actually went to hell too. Didn't you know that? A lot of them were not saved. A lot of them were not saved because they kept rebelling against God at the wilderness. A lot of them, uh, they, kept, they did not keep the faith and work system during the Old Testament. They worshipped idols. But God said the land still belonged to them. You think Rothschilds and these elites are bad? These Jews sacrificed their babies on the altar and they were worshipping pagan gods without shame. That's right. They weren't doing it in secret like the elites. They were doing it without shame in the open. Okay, so what about these Jews? Keep reading. And have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will, what? Never break my covenant with you. You think that's spiritual faith? Of course not. A lot of these Jews did not live by faith like they should have. And yet God remembered that he did not break his promise with them. Why? Because this is not the, this is not the spiritual covenant like us where we receive Jesus Christ by faith, not by works. This is is based on a physical covenant God made with Abraham about their physical land. So here's the thing about the Abrahamic covenant. You got to realize this. It's not only physical and it's not only spiritual. And don't mesh physical and spiritual together. That's why you come up with a mess of doctrines like John Hagee does with, the, with his Jews automatically getting saved and like these anti-Semites do. We're saying that you're, uh, I'm a real Jew, but you're not a real Jew, and they don't look like a Jew from Adam. So th these people right here, they just go bonkers. You just make it easy by rightly dividing. Yeah. God gave a physical and spiritual promise. Within the promise, it contained physical and spiritual elements. And if you read your Bible, there is no doubt about it. There's always a physical element to how God deals things, and there's always a spiritual element to how God thinks does things, and that is undoubtable, indisputable to any Bible reader who just common sense reads the Bible. They know God deals things physically and spiritually.